Hi, and welcome to this Foxtel IQ update. I'm sorry it's been a little while coming, but uh, you know, a bit of COVID and a bit of Christmas sort of happened in between. Uh, but I've had a little bit of time to play with the Foxtel IQ box and try and answer some of the questions that people have been asking. So here we go with uh, a Q and A, just with the most popular questions that I've been asked over the last few months. Let's go. So in today's video, we're going to answer a few of the questions that people have been asking. Uh, the questions are listed behind me. Uh, there is no stop button, so we're going to find out where is the stop button, what can we use for a stop button. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at how the IQ5 compares with the IQ2. We're going to answer that question, maybe. Uh, what is that USB port for? And how do I set up favourites on my IQ5? And how can I receive free to air channels on the IQ5 box? So that's just a simple setup question. So we'll answer that. We're gonna look at what apps are on the IQ5 and perhaps what is coming in the future. And uh, if you have an IQ2 set top box, when are you going to get your IQ5? Are you going to get one? And when does support for the IQ2 end? So these questions and many more Maybe not many more, but these questions will be answered in today's video and let's go. So let's start off with the first one. There is no stop button. So I had a few people ask this question and uh, there is no stop button. Where is the stop button? This has been one of the most asked questions. I could not find any real answers to this and there's nothing official out there. The best advice I can give and what has worked for me is to press the play pause button and then the back button because we're dealing with a streaming box. There is a focus on resuming and binging content and we find ourselves frantically pressing the back button before the next episode begins. Well, after some further investigation, I've found that pressing the illuminated Foxtel logo at the top of the controller returns you to the live TV. In effect, it works very similar to what the stop button used to do on the older devices. So we're just tapping this button up the top here. So there we go. Sure, we can see that nice and clearly. And uh, yeah, yeah, for me, that's worked uh, pretty much how I use the stop button anyway. So try that, see if that works for you. It's uh, pretty good. So on, on this device, there's only three buttons that light up. So you've got your uh, the Foxtel button, uh, the voice controller button, and the home button here. They're the three buttons that light up. And uh, a Foxtel would like you to live inside this remote and just use this remote. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the apps. Okay, so this is quite a detailed question now, and it's uh, it's asking how does the IQ5 compare to the IQ2? What are we going to lose uh, when we move from IQ2 to IQ5, and uh, and what are we going to gain? Yeah, because that's probably the most important one. What are we going to gain? Uh, but let's um let's start with. Uh, uh, the IQ2 and the news that uh, on demand will be shut down. So what is happening with IQ2? Well, I do continue to get questions about IQ2 and how it is different from IQ4 and 5. So I was preparing a video focusing on the differences, but I decided to stop that and include a summary in this video, mainly because IQ2 is going. So. Instead, I will tell you about what you will miss out on if you stay with IQ2 and what you will gain when you go to IQ5. Let's face it, it's better than all the previous models and it is where Foxtel, Foxtel will put all their development. So let's just start with the knowledge that IQ2 is disappearing and you will no longer have any of the features previously available to that set-top box. 
If you are an I2Q user and you have not received your invitation to upgrade to IQ5, then I suggest you go to your account and start making some inquiries because at the end of January, some key features of IQ2, they will be turned off. Now, I came across an article on the Foxtel support website saying that from January 31st, 2021, the on-demand feature will be shut down for older boxes. This means that IQ2, IQ1.5 and IQ1 and MyStar boxes will be impacted. So to assist with this change, there has been a gradual reduction in the on-demand content available for these boxes over the last few months. However, on-demand content will still be available to view via Foxtel Go. Foxtel Go is a streaming box that supplies some of the same features you will get when you upgrade to IQ4 or IQ5. Now, for some people, it might be a viable option just to ditch the set-top box and buy a streaming box like the Foxtel Go. Uh, I'm uncertain about the future of that box, but uh, it, it could be a logical choice for some people to get now uh, while they make up that while they make up their mind. If you get a bit nervous about not getting your IQ two upgraded, um, you can you can go to many retailers and actually buy your uh, Foxtel Go box. But uh, if you want to get an IQ five, you can only get it through uh, Foxtel themselves. Can't go to Harvey Norman or JB Hi Fi and, and rock up and get one because. Uh, be good if you could because they're only 99 bucks. So let's talk about what you will lose when you move from IQ2 to IQ5. What you lose is the cable connection, which in my opinion gave a better quality picture and recording experience. Having said that, the streaming capabilities of the IQ5 is very good in 4K and even offer ultra HD recording and streaming. It's quite a feat for a streaming box these days, but it shows that the Foxtel is recognizing where people are getting their entertainment from and the quality of internet service is available to the general public. Once again, you will need to have a good internet connection if you are going to get the most out of your IQ5. There is a disclaimer each time you do record something and it says that on some occasions your recording is if well yeah if your recording may be less than 4k's depending on the internet traffic at the time so in other words you may record the f1s or some high quality sports program and expect to watch it in ultra hd or at least 4k unfortunately my tv doesn't do uht um, ultra hd but, uh, but it does do beautiful 4K and, uh, and I've recorded some of the um, uh, F1s and uh, supercars and um, even some uh, A-League soccer, bits and pieces like that. And most of the time, the playback quality is really good, but sometimes, disappointingly, it's been a little bit fuzzy and more like the standard uh, definition that we can relate to um, a lot of the free to air channels that broadcast so much content just in standard definition. So uh, most of the time I'm satisfied with uh, the recording quality, uh, but sometimes it's just not that good. So, you know, I found that a slight disappointment on occasion because when we have new innovations, we have high expectations. And I think Foxtel has gone a long way towards that destination, but it still has some way to go. I expect the IQ6 will be a really good offer and improvements to the IQ5 over time could only be better when, than where we are today. And really, we're in a pretty good place when it comes to streaming content. It's, it's really not bad. But see, unfortunately, my television does not play the Promise Ultra HD on the Foxtel IQ5. It was teasing me with <laughs> these little ads and you can see it in the TV guide. Um, but I've just played Ultra HD content from Netflix and YouTube. But I have no idea if it is real Ultra HD or just a play on the words, considering the settings of my television possibly cannot handle such high content.
But I've been running a few comparisons between IQ2 and IQ5 when it comes to recording and pausing and playing and rewinding content stored in a hard drive. What I found that was on the IQ2, the accuracy of recording and playing slow-mo and other things was significantly better than the experience when playing recorded content on the IQ5. My inclination is that because it is streamed, it is viewed as high quality, but it cannot be paused or played the same amount with the same amount of accuracy than the high quality content that was recorded from the IQ2 because it came via the satellite or cable, uh, which was a solid signal stored directly on the hard drive. Plus, the plus side to this was that streaming content that is recorded can be fast forwarded at uh, 60 times, which is quite good. And if you want to skip through to the end of a program, if you wanted to see how something ends or just want to get past those ads in a hurry, you can certainly skip through them quite quickly. I often found myself overshooting and then rewinding with the IQ2. I have not done much skipping in the IQ5 simply because when you use the catch up feature, uh, you can watch the same program without the interruption of the ads. So certainly that is a big plus with having a streaming box over a traditional recording set top box like the IQ2 was. Uh, so my impression is that you are gaining more than you are losing with the IQ5 and I will settle for the standards I have now with the anticipated improvement as Foxtel gets better at delivering the promise of IQ5. Okay, here's quite an interesting uh, question, uh, more of an observation too. So when you look on the back of your IQ5 box, you'll see it's got a USB port. And, and I've seen them appear on other streaming boxes as well. And uh, what I thought was uh, the USB port uh, would uh, logically be there to plug a hard drive into so that you could record content to it and playback content from it. Um, so on the back of the IQ5 box, there is a U USB port that looks just like a traditional USB port. And with my limited expectation, it behaves just like a traditional USB port. My initial thought was that it may be to attach a hard drive if you wanted to record to a device, if you did not have the additional hard drive, which does come with the IQ5 packages. The IQ5 I have comes with the one terabyte set-top box, which is placed underneath the IQ5 box itself and looks quite neat. And my theory is that once that is plugged in, the ability to record or to watch from a plugged in hard drive in the USB is bypassed. So it seems you could plug such things in as lights and other items, even to be charged, or small things like LED Christmas tree or a coffee cup warmer, perhaps, and see how you go, just utilizing the port for those methods. It could be possible that the USB ports might be there for future developments of the IQ5 set-top box, but we can only wait and see as there has been literally nothing written about the USB port on the back of the box and any of the Foxtel websites or support forums. Here's another quick question that uh, wasn't uh, mentioned in my list, but uh, I'll answer it while I'm here, while I think of it, and uh, it is... Have you had any trouble with your streaming since installing the IQ5? And my answer to that is I have a fairly good internet connection that can reach 100 megabytes per second download and typical upload speeds since uh, you have the MBN connection. So there have really been no awkward times as long as the connection is stable. Where, where we are in my area, we don't have trouble with overcrowded internet services. So at the moment, and let's hope it stays that way, uh, I'm having a pretty good experience uh, with my uh, streaming and uh, with my internet connection uh, as a whole. So uh, the, the, the NBN is working fine for me where I am. Okay, 
1965 had a question regarding the IQ4 and the IQ5 when it comes to viewing sports and trying to pause at particular points. He says that the IQ2 was very good as you could stop exactly where you want it, but the IQ4 seems to skip. And, and I can say that the IQ5 may be closer to the IQ4 experience, but it may be a little bit better. I certainly agree that the IQ2 was much more accurate at stopping at a particular place, simply because I feel the original media that you recorded was at a higher quality or, or different configuration than the streaming content, which is saved, which I think may be compressed images or different, uh, which are different rates than what I was getting through the cable recordings. So I think you might find that the skipping will not be as accurate as the IQ2 and the fast forward I felt was better. And as time goes by, I will probably forget how accurate the I2Q was. And I must say, it was one of the things that we did lose when we upgrade to the IQ5 was the accuracy of the IQ2 when it came to stopping, pausing and selecting where we would like to watch content from. Okay. How do I set up my favourites on the IQ5? Setting up a favourite is done by going to settings, favourite channels and scrolling through the guide to find the channels that you want to add. To add a channel, you must press the select on your control, press select on each channel until you have selected all the ones that you want and then back out. To remove a channel from your favourite, just repeat the steps and press select and the channel will be removed. Here's a little video showing what to do.
here's another question uh, question uh, also uh, comes from the the settings menu so you can achieve uh, quite a bit in the settings menu but this one is how can i receive free to air channels on iq5 box by cable okay so this was from mark and uh, and my answer to Mark was that you can connect your terrestrial aerial or coaxial cable to the IQ5 streaming box and run a channel scan. You cannot connect to the traditional cable network as it is closing down. So I hope um, what Mark meant by cable was coaxial cable. Uh, but uh, so basically you just plug the, the household antenna into the back of your IQ5 box. It's pretty straightforward. So uh, good luck with that. It's pretty good, pretty easy. Just go to your settings and have a bit of a flick around. Okay. What apps are on the IQ5? There's not that many. And, you know, when you think about it, you want um, Foxtel to keep you in this little um, controller for as much as they can. So you would expect that there would be a fair few apps on there, wouldn't you? So... The apps that are available on the IQ5 and the IQ4 for that are Netflix, ABC iView, including a dedicated kids section, SBS On Demand, YouTube, YouTube Kids, Vivo, which is pretty interesting, Golf TV, which is might be interesting, and uh, coming in 2022, we have Amazon Prime. So you probably got a couple of ones in there that uh, could be of interest to you. But yeah, but once again, you would think Foxtel would try and keep you in here by having uh, a few, few services, even if they are from competitors, as long as you're using this remote to get to everything and the voice control and little bits and pieces like that, uh, the chances are pretty high that you can just press your Foxtel button here at the top, which we now worked out works a bit like the stop button, and you'll be returning back to your Foxtel content. So if I was Foxtel, I'd be getting some more apps added to this as soon as possible. And the final question goes into a little bit of detail. Uh, and it is, I have an IQ2 step-top box. When can I get an IQ5? So the answer that I've provided here has actually come from the Foxtel support website. So I'll just read it as it is on the website. Okay, so basically the IQ to one terabyte box is no longer being supported. The TV cable network in Australia will be closing. So this means we will need to upgrade your set-top box to the latest technology our IQ5. We are progressively shutting down our cable set-top boxes by type, and this will no longer be available to provide Foxtel TV over this network. Your cable I2Q one terabyte box will no longer be supported from 31st of March, 22. So a couple of months. To ensure you have the best Foxtel experience and that your service is not disrupted, it's now time to upgrade to the new IQ5 set-top box at no extra cost. There's a little asterisk on the end of that. Uh, when you visit the website, you will see that. We'll offer you an upgrade to an internet-only IQ5 at no extra charge. This means that you don't need a satellite installation and instead you can use your home broadband to view your Foxtel service through IQ5. So then we've got a bit of a disclaimer here. That's what this asterisk was. It says it's only available to cable customers with an I2Q one terabyte box. IQ5 offer includes self-install only. Additional charges will apply for a technician install. Offer ends 31st of March, 2022. So it's very easy to set up. So you won't need uh, in-house uh, technician or anything like that. You can connect it by Wi-Fi. So you can pretty much put it wherever you want. You don't have to have it close to the modem or to your NBN box. And they all go, they, they are the Telstra, Telstra, the Foxtel website um, goes on to say the following. 
it continues like this. We will let you know how to redeem your new box in the information we send to you. You will need to redeem before 31st of March, 2022. If you have any issues redeeming the new box, call us on 1300 762 708. Once you've redeemed the box, we'll send it straight to your door, along with easy to follow install instructions. Your box will be sent via Australia Post and will be delivered to most metro areas within one to five business days of replacing or placing your order. Most regional areas take three to 10 business days for delivery. You'll receive an SMS from Foxtel once your equipment has been sent out. The SMS will contain a tracking number so you can track your delivery using Australia Post's tracking item page. So, so there you go. That is uh, pretty much the story when it comes to uh, your Foxtel experience. So, <laughs> uh, I hope that answers most of the questions that you might have. If uh, if this brings up more questions, well, you know, you're welcome to uh, tell me all about it. But uh, that's pretty much. Uh, all I have to tell you about a Foxtel today, uh, I'm a bit, a bit intrigued with what's going to happen with the apps and if, if um, other services like Paramount Plus and uh, Disney and a few others are coming in there. Uh, what I will be doing is looking at other streaming services in general. Uh, now that the more things are going into the streaming sort of sphere and we're moving away from traditional hardwired connections like cable and terrestrial coaxial and and things like that so it only makes sense that we have a look at the streaming services that are out there uh what the quality there is uh what devices we can watch them on so it's certainly an area that interests me so i'll be looking at uh the google tv streaming system so if you want to find out about that just keep subscribing to this channel or or just keep looking out for posts on it i'll be uh looking at the amazon device itself and also looking at the telstra tv which is a roku device uh which i've been using for some time now so uh, i do have a fair bit of information about uh, a few of these devices so if you've got questions about them just put them below in here and that helps me put together information for other videos but uh I won't go on anymore. Hopefully I've answered your questions. If you do have more questions, please put them below. If you've got any comments, uh, if you want to correct me on anything, go for it because uh, that's what it's all about. I'm just here to share information and um, and hopefully help you with your experience as in some ways we're forced to go into you know, some of these areas by our suppliers. And sometimes we just have questions and we're curious and we want to try things out. So I'll try it out for you. So anyway, thanks very much. And I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.